Hey guys, so, you know, awesome background this white piece of paper is, right? So, um, just, this video is about the glue on. Normally I would do this on the computer where I have paint and I can animate, um, and stuff like that, even though the animations aren't really the best, but, you know, um, Hypercam 2 is broken, so now I have to settle for a badly focused piece of paper. Better. Anyways, um, it's on the glue on. So, gluon's a little, little particle, right? And what it does is it mediates a strong force, meaning that there's a field of gluons, and then those field, that field creates the strong force. You can see my video on quantum fields, if you want a bit more um, information on that. Its theoretical mass is nothing, zero, meaning it would mediate the strong force at the speed of light. Now, we've experimentally um, seen that to be l uh, at least less than 20 mega electron volts which means that it can't mediate the strong force at the uh, speed of light. Now this is, you know, confirmed because the range of the strong force isn't infinite, you know. Um, the range is actually very small. The strong force is limited to 10 to the minus 15th meters because essentially gluons create these, like, um, tunnel things. I don't know, I'm not really sure how to describe them. I'm not, I don't really understand them fully myself. But um, essentially, these limit it to being 10 to the minus 15th meters, which is about the um, distance of an atomic nucleus. So if we get, you know, atomic nucleus, that would be about, you know, ish, 10 to the minus 15th meters. So this limits strong force to having a pretty small impact. You know, so you can't have the strong force hold these two things together because look how far apart they are, right? You know, maybe now they could be held together, but that that doesn't really happen. So, um, to give a bit more um, statistics, they don't have any charge, zero electric charge, but they do have a spin one, so they are spin one boson. And, yeah, th yes, they are bosons. Anyways, um... Gluons, if you were to, um, because gluons have a spin, um, they per they participate in the strong force as well as mediating it. Um, so this is pretty crucial. This is why some people think that gluons can form these particles made solely of gluons, where these you have, you know, proton and neutron. Some people think there would be something like this, where this is both gluon call them glue balls. So this is our atomic nucleus. This would be glue ball. Uh, they haven't been experimentally confirmed, but they're looking for it in the LHC, so hope to find some soon. Maybe. Um, so, in case you're wondering, the way that what's inside, if we were to zoom in on one of these protons, we would get quarks, right? Up, up, down. So what holds these quarks together? Little gluons. Right? These would be gluons. So gluons hold the quarks together in um, hadrons, yeah, including mesons as well, not just birons. But what holds these protons and neutrons together are mesons, specifically pions here. But um, mesons also can be bosons, composite bosons as they're known, meaning boson. The gluon is like its its own particle. It's an elementary particle. Nothing we, we we know of nothing that makes up the gluon. We think it's infinitely small, at least to our knowledge. Probably isn't, but it could be. So then, um, particles like the mesons have two quarks in them that are held together by gluons, and these mesons are also bosons that keep the protons and the neutrons stuck together in nucleus. So now, so you know the gluons only hold it together inside hadrons, not outside hadrons. So, um, in case, uh, how do, have we discovered it, right? It's pretty important. Well, we've never actually seen, like, a free gluon sitting around. Like, we've never, the, our detectors have never seen this. They've never been like, well, that's a gluon. You know? That's never happened. What really has happened is they've seen, you know, some jets and some stuff happening, and then they'd be like, well, because that's happening, there must be a gluon, right? 
and then they've seen, well, we think the gluon has a spin of one, right? And then they go plug it into their research and they see, yes, it does have a spin of one. We've experimentally confirmed this. So then, you know, there we go. That's how we know a gluon exists. But we've never actually seen one floating around. Now, um, one of the ways we know this is because we haven't seen any quarks just floating around. Like, we've never seen just, you know, a quark. Hasn't really happened, except for the top quark, but I'll get to that later. Anyways, the reason we've never seen that is because the gluons, at like 10 to the minus 20 seconds, right? It takes a gluon 10 to the minus 20 seconds to stick quarks together to form a hadron, meson, or biron, doesn't matter. It takes about 10 to the minus 20 seconds for them to stick them together. And now most quarks have a lifetime longer than that, meaning the quark lives long enough, all quarks except the top quark, live long enough to be stuck together into hadrons. So the reason we can see a free top quark is because the gluon can't stick the top quarks together, the top quarks decay too fast. So, you know, we have some, uh, you know, say we have some strange quarks and charm quarks floating around, you know, in 10 to the minus 22 seconds, those are not long, no longer floating around, they're stuck together in a meson or biron or what have you. Right, now if you have two top quarks, they're floating around and then they're not there anymore and the gluon can't stick them together. So, you know, that's it. Um, anyway, uh, the gluons also have color charge, which means there's eight different ones, but um, that just basically means they participate in the strong force as well as mediating it. Now, some people think gluons can form things, like I said, called glue balls. You know, I don't know if that's what you will. But if you want to draw a gluon in a Feynman diagram, looks like that. That's a gluon. So, just to go over gluons, they mediate the strong force. They theoretically have no mass, but in reality they have about less than 20 mega electron volts, experimentally. They don't have any electric charge whatsoever, so they don't participate in the electromagnetic force. No spin. Um, uh, because of certain properties of gluons, the strong force itself is limited to 10 to the minus 15th meters, which is about as long as an atomic nucleus, meaning anything bigger than an atomic nucleus can't be stuck together, using the strong force at least. Gluons, gluons themselves only stick things together inside hadrons, protons, neutrons, and bigger categories, birons or uh, mesons. Anyways, um, what, what sticks protons and neutrons together are um, mesons, composite bosons. Um, we've never observed a free gluon, and um, this is due to the fact that gluons stick together in particles, and this is verified because we've never seen a free quark. You know, this has never happened because the gluons and the quarks stick together so fast. Um, keep in mind about the Fermilab top quark stuff I was talking about earlier. So, you know, that's it for gluons. I mean, I hope I explained the strong force to you. If you really don't know the strong force, takes two particles, sticks them together like super glue. Pretty much. It's very strong. It's the strongest force we know of. That's why it's called the strong force. Yeah, so um, now that's about it for the gluon. You know, I hope you enjoyed the video.